another viewer wrote in and asked if I could go deeper into the experience of being turned into a human doll as well as turning others into human dolls. Now for me, Kat, um, it's all about the fantasy and the transformation. It's, it's, it's all about being turned into something that me, real life Kat, is absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so being turned into this, you know, hyper sexualized, hyper beautiful um, doll person um, in latex and this doll mask is is so completely far away from real life me that I I just find the transformation incredible and, and it allows me, like I said earlier about what the Miss Meat Face mask does for me but being turned into a doll as well, it transforms me and tears me completely away from everyday real life. And it, and I can become something that I'm totally not. And I don't have to think about all of the annoying, stupid things that I worry about as cat, etc. So again, it's that transformation into this fantastical object that, that, I just absolutely love and it, and it helps me psychologically because for that time that I'm dressed as this doll and that I'm transformed as this doll, I do not have to worry about things. I don't have to think about, oh gosh, you know, God, did I pay the, the, the electricity bill or, you know, it, it, it just, it's that, that complete fantasy transformation that I adore. And it's, it is, it's like a form of therapy. Um, and, and as well, so when I transform, say my partner, um, or somebody into a meat maid, um, and it's the same thing for them. I I mean, I, I can't speak for each person individually, but I know for my partner, for instance, that it's that transformation and, and you, you're turning yourself into something that your everyday real life, whoever you are is not. And, and that's a magical, magical thing to be able to do that and to let go of all of your baggage, all of your everyday baggage, and to become this character, this persona, this living doll that you have nothing to think about except for the task at hand um, and, and, you know, or just sitting there looking pretty and that's all you have to do and you don't have to worry about anything else on the outside. Uh, that's a really freeing thing to be able to do. And that's why I personally enjoy, you know, d going through the, these transformations and being turned into a doll and turning others into dolls. It's a lot of, I mean, you know, and it's also a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to dress up. I mean, that's the other bottom line is that it's just a lot of fun dressing up. I love dressing up, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. <laughs> and I also had quite a few questions from viewers about my personal kinks and fetishes and how they relate to my partners, and then as well as into the Miss Meat Face universe and her own kinks and fetishes. Pretty much mm, Miss Meat Face's kinks and interests and fetishes are probably about the same as mine personally. Um, hers might be a little more amplified or focused in, in one area, uh, perhaps. But in regards to how my own interests in fetishes and BDSM, etc., how they worked with my partners, um, and how I started incorporating my partner as my meat maid into a lot of my Miss Meat Face work. Well, that happened organically on its own. Um, it was actually my partner's idea to bring them into the Miss Meat Face universe. And at that point, personally, I was in a much more submissive state of mind as well as Kat and as the artist. I was viewing Miss Meat Face um, as more of a kind of tragic, more submissive character at that point in time. But as my own personal life changed and evolved and my relationship with my partner changed and evolved, everything just kind of got turned around, which is actually a really exciting time. And it's still, it's still evolving and changing, which is fabulous. And it's so much fun. It makes creating these scenes for Miss Meat Face and these images so fun and enjoyable and joyful and sexy too, which, you know, gosh, what a freaking amazing combination that is, right? We're just really lucky because we work so well together, not just as 
partners in a sexual way in our personal lives, but we work together as creative partners in, in, in my Miss Meat Face work. And, and it all just melded together. And it's, and it's just, like I said, it just keeps evolving and growing into new and interesting adventures. Um, so yeah. And, you know, like I said, when I first started out, I was much more of, in a submissive headspace, uh, not only just personally, but with Miss Meat Face. And that completely evolved into Miss Meat Face being much more dominant, the much more dominantly presented one in the images um and so it's it's such an interesting journey um and thank you yeah thank you for these questions because it's it really gives me it also gives me some perspective on you know where i started at and where you know things have have eventually ended up and are just morphing continuously I was actually thinking that it might be interesting for a future episode to invite my partner on the show and actually interview me. Um, I'm curious to see what kind of questions that he would come up with. Um, and maybe you might all find it interesting as well. So that could be something that I could do in the future. Another common question that I get from people a lot is, do you create your own latex designs? Um, which is a great question because obviously, you know, I work in latex so much that it would only make sense that I know how to make my own latex. Um, and actually during lockdown, I taught myself a bit of latex making and design. Um, the one thing that I would really like to be able to do is make my own hoods, but hoods are one of the trickiest things to make in latex. Um, so I'm a bit trepidatious about um, how frustrated I might get, <laughs> but one of these days that is on my list of things to do. Um, so these are a few of the, the pieces that I made. These are uh, waist cinchers. So I did some latex waist cinchers for myself for shoots. Um, and here's another one. But it was mainly just to get used to the materials, the different latex thicknesses, playing with um, studs and different applique techniques, teaching myself, you know, how, how to handle um, things and and work with the latex itself because it can be extremely tricky. Um, yeah, so the answer is yes, I, I do make my own latex designs, um, but it's a bit limited right now. But um, in the future, I am hoping to start creating my own hoods that I can use for shoots because that would be fantastic. I hope that you'll join me in episode six of What's Behind the Mask. And of course, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook under at Miss Neat Face. And also, if you would like to donate towards a pack of film for an upcoming Miss Neat Face shoot, I would be much appreciative. You can go to buymeacoffee.com slash Miss Neat Face and donate whatever amount you would like to donate. 